so we derived from first principles the values for v i l and v i h for a long channel inverter right and we said we needed to make no approximation whatsoever to handle this case so we got accurate expressions right so the key feature of a long channel inverter is at this point of v out equal to v in right and this is by the way v out versus v in and this is going all the way up to vdd the slope at this particular point was minus infinity right and therefore we went ahead and derived the exact expressions for the noise margins and vil vih and all that and we got so this was vil vih sorry h corresponding values v o l v o h right and in the process of deriving the whole thing we came up with this thing that in a long channel inverter this region of indeterminate input where the input is considered neither high nor low and will be governed by noise is actually a very small region and that width is 2 times v o l remember v o l is actually very close to 0 as you can see here also i have drawn it a little exaggerated it's it's supposed to be 0 it's very close to 0 so this region of indeterminate re of uh, where the input is indeterminate is just 2 v o l and this is not surprising because the slope at v in v out equal to v in is minus infinity so this is the closest you can get to an ideal inverter or an ideal voltage transfer characteristic that we were looking for we wanted the ideal characteristic to be somewhere on this red line right we wanted this to be you know my vm and then that to be the region of transition from low to high but this is the closest we can get okay so let us just summarize our discussion on robustness robustness of cmos inverters V in, V out, right? First key point logic voltage levels are rail to rail values, right? So, rail to rail voltage swing. So, it means logic 0 is ground logic 1 is VDD okay but for that small leakage current which is really negligible this is definitely true when the input is 0 output is VDD when the out input is VDD output is 0 right second important point it is ra ratio less which means it does not depend on what my value of WP and WN are. Whatever the values, the voltage swing is rail to rail. It is a ratio less logic, which means it is independent of WP by WN. You will see why this is called ratio less because later we will do ratio logic where it will depend explicitly on this WP and WN value, okay. Third thing is output impedance is very low. In a sense, the output 
is driven very strongly to either ground or rigidity because when the NMOS turns on, it is turned on very strongly and it pulls the out output to logic low. When the PMOS is turned on and the NMOS is off, it is pulled to logic high through a very, very low resistance path and therefore, this implies it is immune to noise. So, even if there is a glitch at the output, it cannot like you know just go up and down or it will not go to some other value and settle, it will come back to its original value, okay. Third thing, uh, not third, fourth point, what is the input current to that at V in? Huh? Exactly. So, basically 0 gate current. implies if you are not worried about delays, this is infinite fan out. What does this mean? If I have an inverter like this, okay, fan out is basically how many other gates it can drive, what load it can drive. Okay, I am going to drive 1, 2, 3 gates and so on. So, how much current is available for charging or discharging this capacitor is primarily dependent on the transistors in this inverter. Whatever that PMOS can provide, that is a charging current. Whatever the NMOS can provide, that is a discharging current. Now, if some small gate current had to be, was needed in order to drive the other inverters, then you are going to limit this current that is avail available for charging or discharging the capacitor, right. Now, because this gate current is 0, why is the gate current 0? Because it is going to an insulator. The gate is an oxide, silicon dioxide and therefore or hafnium oxide and therefore that is like an insulator and it, it can tolerate 0 current. The BJT for example has a very, very small base current. I cannot make this assumption for a BJT. Now, therefore, any current that is available from this device under test, right, DUT, my device under test will be entirely used to actually charge this capacitor or to discharge this capacitor, which means it has infinite fan out, okay. So, these are the uh, very, very uh, significant advantages of CMOS circuits and that is why it has dominated VLSI design since 1980, right. Somewhere around the first, second or second microprocessor or so people switched to CMOS logic and it has been used left, right and center, right. The first transistor was made somewhere in 50s or something, right, in a lab, right. Uh, the demonstration of the first IC was made, not transistor, IC was done in some 50s somewhere, by 80s it had reached mass production and since 80s till now, it is simply dominating VLSI technology and it is very hard to displace this technology because of all these advantages that are there here, right. The kind of current, the kind of control, ease of manufacturability, all of these make CMOS uh, lo logic, right, very, very attractive, right. And the, uh, one of the most important advantages is steady state equal to 0, which means is, let me put approximately 0, okay, is very, very low. Because if my NMOS is on, right, that means the PMOS is off, right. So, there is really no conduction path from VDD to ground in steady state and that is where my the clock will be for most of the time. It will make a transition then goes to sit in 1 or 0. Every node in my circuit will go and sit at some logic level and whether it is logic 1 or logic 0, there is no conduction path from VDD to ground and therefore, it is almost 0. So, this 
uh, current is actually leakage, right. So, only now it has started to show up significantly, right, maybe last 2-3 generations leakage current has started to show up significantly, but for a long time this leakage current was really neg neg negligible, okay. So, this is the summary of the robustness of CMOS inverters and CMOS logic in general, I should also maybe add an other word here called static CMOS. This word static refers to the logic being driven to either power or ground through a low resistance path, okay. Later I will talk about dynamic circuits where the output will go and sit on a capacitor and the capacitor is floating, there is nothing driving that. So, capacitor has to hold that voltage and that becomes a dynamic node, okay. So, here the static refers to being driven to supply or ground through a low resistance path which means that as long as power is on that logic state will remain forever. Of course, if you take the power off you lose it. Okay. So, with that we conclude the discussion on robustness, noise margin and other aspects of the static uh, CMOS inverter.